says, good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of death better than the day of birth. For death is the destiny of every one. The living should take heed to this. So the reason I thank God for Google, uh, I Google and come up with this verse. <coughs> and uh, I thought, you know, a good, uh, what I was looking for is what to say about a good name. And... Uh, J.C. Gillen had a good name. Had a good name. Uh, nobody here that can dispute that. Uh, I want us, I'm not here to mourn the loss of J.C. Passing, I'm here to celebrate his life. I don't like the word funeral. Funeral's always been scary to me, the word. Uh, it's always been depressing. But I, uh, I like the word of celebration of life. And that's what we're here today to do, or that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to celebrate Jake's life because Jake loved life. J.C. was more than an uncle to me. He was a father to me. He was my friend. He was my hero. Uh, my first memories of Jake 
I'll, I'll call him Jake and JC. I usually call him Jake. I was about five years old. I remember sitting on the front fender of that 50 Oldsmobile that a lot of you out here will remember. And Jake was standing by me, had his leg crossed, standing up, had a cap on, or a hat rather. A few times I've ever seen him in a hat. Uh, I was so proud of that picture. Jake made a copy of it and some more pictures and brought to me. So I want you to have these. He knew I loved his cars. That's my first memories of Jake sitting on the fender. He told me a lot of stories about that car. He said the boys come from Dark Cross, Dorval, other places to run that 50 Oldsmobile. It was fast and Jake could drive it. And that's just one of many of the fast cars that he had in his lifetime. Uh, Jake, like I said, was like a father to me. I don't know, I come in one day and there's a big teddy bear there. And I wasn't about four or five. Teddy bear was big, nearly as big as I was. Jake had gone to the fair or somewhere and had won that teddy bear. Black and white teddy bear with a bow tie. I believe the bow tie was red or blue. Got a picture of that and I was so proud of that teddy bear. I told him that thing, like I said, I had to tote it like this because it wasn't big enough to put <laughs> in one hand, and its feet would about drag the floor on the ground. Told you that bear wore out and Mama couldn't sew it up no more. I wanted to be like Jake. I wanted to be JC, he was my hero. I wanted to dress like him. I wanted him up. Back then, we called them our britches. They were blue jeans. I wanted my britches rolled up like Jake's. I wanted to wear striped socks like Jake's, and I wanted to wear a nice shirt. Jake always wore a nice wrist watch with a leather band. Wanted a wrist watch. Jake got me a wrist watch. Started teaching me how to tell time. Back then, the tobacco companies, there's a promotion put out little cigarette lighters. It's about this big. They wasn't like a Zippo lighter that you flip open and strike the flint. You would pop the trigger and it would light. Well, I wanted a cigarette lighter. J.C. got me a cigarette lighter. Didn't have no fluid in it. <laughs> I couldn't light it. I could strike it. But I'd pull that. Remember pulling that bat and holding that watch out for people to see. I'd pull that cigarette out, of my, <laughs> cigarette lighter out of my pocket, and I'd flip it. But I, I was prepared. If you needed to know what time it was, I could tell you. If you needed your cigarette light, I was a man for the job. <laughs> and that's uh, that's some of my fondest memories of J.C. Uh, we grew up, Papa built Mom and Daddy a house next to the feed mill, and uh, my life was, uh, was my, my, J.C. was just my life. Uh, I uh, couldn't wait to get off of school. I'd go straight to Mama's when school was out, or even before I started school, I got up and went straight to Mama's house. Uh, I stayed with J.C. in the feed mill. He would take me rides in his car, and I'd say, let's go up to the river bottom, Jake. I said, don't know where the river bottom's at, it's up in Dawsonville. Long straightaway there that crossed the river. We'd leave out and go up there, and then, uh, first time I remember it's in that red and white 56 shovel there. And uh, I said, let's make it go fast. <laughs> get it up to 100. And J.C. would get that shovel out. I'd sit over in about the middle of the seat and look at the speed on her. That speed on her hit 100, he'd back out of it. We'd go up there, top of the hill, there up tops of the road, turn around. We'd come back down through there and I'd say, make it do 100 again, Jake. And uh, he would. <laughs> and uh, I guess that got me my interest in uh, fast cars. A lot of other things, Jake was a lot of first for me, just like the cigarette lighter, the watch. I remember him taking me to my first fire at coming. Uh, it's just a lot of first that I remember Jake doing for me. Uh, I wanted a I wanted a Honda motor scooter, and uh, Jake got with Mama, seen to it that Mama told her about it. Mama seen to it that I had a Honda motor scooter. And yeah, I probably got special treatment over some of the grandkids, but I lived right by the by my mom. 
probably spent as much time with Mama and Papa as I did with my own Mama and Daddy, so, up until I, you know, got 10, 11 years old. But uh, those are my memories of J.C. I'm going to miss him. Uh, he, he, was just, uh, he wasn't perfect. Every one of us standing here knows he wasn't perfect. He's like all of us. He had his faults. But, well, you know, where you like J.C. or where you didn't like him, you know, uh, that's between you and Jake. But there'll be no hard words about Jake said to me. Uh, he, like I said, he was my, he was like a daddy. And uh, I could talk on and on. But now, I want to get to the people that's in, in the Jake's life that took care of him. Again, this is something I Google. Caregiving is truly carried out, carrying out God's commandment to love our fellow man. A caregiver's prayer is for your love, sacrificial, is God at his best. You walk by faith in darkness of the great unknown. And your courage, even his weakness, gives life to your beloved. You'll hold shaking hands and provide ultimate care. Your presence is known that you are simply there. Uh, Greg and Lori, Phil and Connie, Sheila, Greg. Sheila was there with Jake's wife till the end. I can't tell you how much you're appreciated. Uh, God will bless y'all. Y'all was around when I wasn't. Y'all was there when I could have been. Greg, you and Lori cared for them when Rita was alive. Your boys grew up there riding their four wheeler and it tickled Jake to death. Tickled Jake to death. But y'all, y'all been through the dark times with JC. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Connie, you and Phil have been there. Y'all have done the same. He was, he spoke highly of y'all. He loved y'all. Y'all was always there. I was always there for Jake. John, I can't tell you, son, how proud I am of you. You come out of a situation of caring for a sick grandfather in his dying days. Went right into caring for a sick mother to her dying days. And you had to walk that path again with Jack. You didn't have to. You choose to. And Jack loves you. He knew at 2 o'clock in the morning who to call. He knew at night who to call. And I'm so proud of you and the care and the love that you showed Jake. You'll be blessed for it. And uh, what would we do without caregivers? What would we do? I thank all of you friends. And I'm going to close with this because I want this to be brief but I can't get because I can't get through much. Didn't want this to be a sad time. Blake Shelton came out with a song a long time ago, a country song called The Baby. That song always stuck with me and for some reason or another every time I heard that song I thought about Jake and Mama. So I wrote this down. This is for Mama killing as much as she is. It is for Jake, because her baby's home. He went home last Monday. He said, my brother said I was rotten to the core, so I got by with more. I guess she was tired by the time I came along. She, she, she cried, she laughed till she cried. I could do no wrong. She was always there to save me because I was her baby. <laughs> This is Mama Gillen's baby right here. His sisters loved him. His older sister's 96 years old. The next one is probably 90, 91. My mother's 88. So especially Inel and Von Seal and Ruby seen this boy come up. 
and they all knew. And in their heart, too, this is a baby. Thank you. There is coming a day where no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, yeah, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me my disgrace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. And there'll be no sorrows there, and no more burdens to bear. No more sickness nor pain, and no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, a glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day. When my Jesus I shall see When I look upon his face The one who saved me by his grace And when he takes me by the hand He leads me through the promised land Oh, what a day Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. Amen. We're here to honor J.C. Gillen, Jr., John Coy. Gillen Jr. He was my friend. Real close friend. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to thank the, the family for the opportunity of being able to stand here. It was a real surprise to me that he would request that I stand. But I'm honored. And I'm humble. I don't know what I'm going to say. The Lord will have to guide me. I'm here to do His will. And I know most of you people. Most of you know me. The ones that don't know me, I'm Lamar Penley. I was born and raised in South County. And I moved to Dawsonville about 20 years ago, 22 years ago, me and my wife bought a house up there and moved. And when I'd come down the road, going back to my place of business and company, which is Twin Lakes RV down there, I'd stop a lot of times. I stopped a lot with Jake. And we sat and talked, moving over all the time, the old times. <clears throat> talked about his deer and he showed me the pictures of all the deer and he had them named. He knew every one of them by name. 
and we talked about the old times when we was teenagers, when we was younger. And some of the things that we done, it was real, real dangerous. And I have to tell a little story that I got a big kick out of after it was over. It was I was probably about 20 years old, 18, something's longer than that. You know how boys stay out late at night, and I was sitting in my car at the old Guff station in the city of Cumming. It's not there anymore, it's right where Pilgrim Mill Road comes in. And uh, of course we didn't have any air conditioning, we had those hot rods, you know. And I sat there and had the doors hung open, probably 12, 31 o'clock in the morning. This car come in, it was Jake. He had uh, carried Rita home, he made a circle, pulled around, pulled up the side of him on the right side. He opened the door and got out and got in the car with me and sat down. We sat there about five minutes, I guess, talking. Here comes this black 54, sitting jacked up in the back from Dawsonville. And it was coming from Atlanta and going toward Dawsonville. Jake said, I know that guy. Jake didn't like him. <laughs> he said, I heard him run his mouth so much about how fast that car is and all who he outrun and all this, that, and the other. He said, I have a good mind to get in my car and go blow his door before he gets the dogs in there. I said, close your door. So Jake the reached over, close the door. Of course, we caught him up along about before we got the door. And we blowed his doors because the race was on. So we go on up, run through double branches that are ungodly the speed. A lot of you know where double branches is at. We go on up and of course we pulled away from it pretty good. We got up to the bottom of the river bottom. And as we went to the river bottom, we put a pretty good little bit of distance between them. Top the hill, right past Rock Creek, and there's, like Jerry was talking about, it, there's Thompson Road on the right, and there's a hairpin turn that goes to the left. And we were running it up on the marshals, the rate of speed, it was probably running about 25, 30 miles an hour. And Jake started beating me on the arm. He said, started hollering at me. He said, slow down, slow down, slow down, pull over, let him, let him pass, let him pass. He said, said, he'll wreck in this first curve, I don't see him wreck. <laughs> <laughs> So I did, I backed off, let him by. He went in the curve and of course he almost lost it. You could see the muffler, the frame, everything under it. The gravel was flying, but he made it. So we picked back up and we was going to run him again from there to Dawsonville. Well, I live in that curve up there where it's real sharp, it goes to the right. And at that time, Cliff Pinion had a place there. So when he got to Cliff Pinion's, he pulled in, and of course that ended the race. But I found out later, it took some time to find out, but I found out later that the reason Jake was hollering at me to slow down and he wanted to see him wreck, it wasn't really that. Jake was worried about us going in that first curve at the rate of speed. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was the, the moral of the story. But me and Jake were good friends and we were kind of competitive, I guess, in years to come. Jake's a year and 10 months older than I am. And uh, I always really looked up to Jake because when I was going to high school, I was probably in the 10th grade and he was a senior. He was graduating. And him and Eddie Smith had cars that they drove to school. And when school was over, they jumped in those cars and they were left out in front of the old gym and around that little curve. And they always both put them in their crossways and spinning, you know. And that was a big thrill for us boys. And I was real, real young. Well, I wanted to be like Jake. 
I don't ever forget every time I ever think of J.C. Gilton, the first thing that pops in my mind is the way he was always dressed. Everything was starched. He had, I don't care if it was blue jeans or what it was, he had creases in his pants. He had a sharp crease in his sleeve. And like he said, he always had that watch and ring on. He was always so meek, he looked like he just had stepped out of the shower. And to me, he looked like a, a, a man model that you see in these magazines. He, and that's the way I, even till this day, when you mention J.C., that's what comes in my mind. I thought a lot of Jake. Jake was my friend, and we, Lisa we, uh, uh, we went a lot of places, done a lot of things together. Uh, of course, when we always met out on the highway, it was automatically a race <laughs> because we was in competition with one another, and. Uh, what can I say? I respect the man. He is my friend. But the most important thing that I want to bring up is, is the time that he gave his heart and soul to Jesus Christ designed him. That's the most important thing. And he went in, as, went in as a sinner and come out as a Christian. And I thought about that quiet 57 Chevrolet that Jake had. I passed by a lot of times, and especially on Saturday, he'd always be out there washing that car, or either waxing it or polishing it, but he was always rubbing on it. I thought about that white car, regardless of how white that he ever got that car regardless of how much he polished it, how much he got to shine. This is one thing I want everybody to remember. There ain't no way he could have ever got it as white as the Lord cleansed his soul on the night at Zion Hill. He, is, he cleansed him as white as snow. You couldn't get that car that clean. No way. And. I don't really know where to go with this. I just know that he is my friend, and I appreciate the opportunity of being able to, it's an honor to me, a, a great honor to stand here and before uh, his relatives, and, and if it's anything that I can ever do for y'all, well, you know, I'm with him. I, I've done a lot of praying about this before I came, and. I've got a little verse that I wanted to uh, read. Uh, I was I was at home the other night and I was praying and praying and praying and I kept trying to find something to, to read. And I thought, Lord, I need something to read. And I prayed from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock about three nights in a row. And about the third night, I said, Lord, I can't do this by myself. You're going to have to help. And I turned the next page, and there it was. He, he, he had it laid out for me. So this is what he wanted me to read. It starts off and it says, Jesus Christ alone is the Son of God. When Jesus rose from the dead, he proved, proved that he was God, that he could forgive sin, and that he had the power to change our lives. By trusting in him for forgiveness, we can begin a new life with him as our guide. Because of Jesus' example, we should be willing to serve God and others. Real greatness in Christ's kingdom is shown by service and sacrifice. I appreciate y'all. I know what y'all done, Jake. And I thank you. Very good.
I know there's a lot of other people done a lot of other things, but I was familiar with y'all, and, and I appreciate it. And I appreciate what y'all done, and that's what this is talking about right here. And uh, ambition, love, power, and position should not be in our motive. Instead, we should do God's work because we love Him. The more convinced that we become that Jesus is God, the more we will see His power and His love. His mighty works show us He is able to save anyone regardless of their past. It don't matter how bad you've been. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter. Uh, it just don't matter. He still loves you. And He'll still save you regardless. And if there's anybody here that's not had that soul washed white as snow, I'll be glad to pray with you when this is over with because you need to be on your knees today before it's too late because you ain't got no promise of tonight or tomorrow or, or next day or next week. You never know what's going to happen. And the way things are looking this day and time with all these wars going on, we don't never know what's going to happen. And, uh, his miracles and forgiveness bring healing, wholeness, and change lives to those who trust in Him. Jesus crossed national, racial, and economic barriers to spread his good news. Jesus' message of faith and forgiveness for the whole world is not just for our church or just for the neighborhood, it's for our nation. We must reach out beyond our own people and the needs to fulfill the worldwide vision of Jesus Christ that people everywhere might hear the great message and be saved from sin and death. And I fail a lot there. I don't speak up a lot of times. And for God and, and like I should. And I, I fall short in a lot of ways. And I don't claim to be something that I'm not. I'm, I'm just who I am. And I'm a humble child of God. And I know I've, I've committed a lot of sin, but I've got to get forgiveness for that. And while I was going through this, I'm fixing to make it short here because I know everybody's getting hard. Uh, but I just want you to know that you don't have to worry about Jake. He's not even here. His soul's already gone. He's with God. And it's been washed white as snow. So, you know, if you're not ready, now's the time. Now's the time. And uh, I had a song that come to mind. I'm not a singer. I've never tried to sing in public in my life. I used to travel with a quartet haul them all over the country in. and uh, my biggest hobby used to be was going to gospel singings. I still love it better than anything and I got a lot of friends that's in the singing business and they try to get me to go with them and I, I've been intending on doing some of that. But anyway, uh, this song here touched my heart and what it says it says, that will be a happy meeting in heaven, I know. When we see the many loved ones we've known here below. Gathering on the blessed hilltops with hearts all aglow. That will be a glad reunion day. Glad day, a glorious day. Glad day, a wonderful day. There with all the holy angels and loved ones to stay. That will be a glad reunion day. You just think about that. We, When we're up there and with all of our friends and no more problems, just like Jake, he ain't got no more problems. He's done 
all of his problems left over on the hill over yonder. He hadn't got anything to worry about now. And, uh, but anyway, that song goes on to say, When we live a million years in that wonderful place, Based in the love of Jesus, beholding his face, it will seem but just a moment of praising His grace. That will be a glad reunion day. Glad day, a wonderful day. Glad day, a glorious day. There with all the holy angels and loved ones to stay. That will be a glad reunion day. I just want you to remember, I thought when this lady here was singing the song that she sung, it talked about the glorious days in heaven. And when we leave here, we're going to leave all these problems. But we need to be ready. You need to have that soul like Jake got his. And I understand that he joined the church at Zion Hill and Later on, him and Rita, they were married 53 years, and uh, I know we had a lot of, they had a lot of sickness and so forth, but it's a good marriage. They later joined Concord. He's now a member of Concord Baptist Church. And so I just want to close with saying, just remember, the white car and you can't get it as white as God can get you so. And if we'll all bow our heads, we'll go to God and pray. Lord, we come to you today thanking you for the many, many blessings. Thanking you, Lord, for all the things you've done for us. Thanking you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to be here. Giving me the opportunity to stand in front of Jake. For Jake thinking enough of it to rest request that I stood. I feel so unworthy. But Lord, I want to do thy will. And I thank you so much for everything you've done for me. And we ask that you bless each and every one of these people that are here. And serve them, Lord, with their needs. Take care of them. Give them good health. Return them back to their homes. Take care of their families. Go with us and be with us and lead us and guide us and direct us. And when that final hour comes, Lord, we ask that you be with us. Go with us all to that final rest of the place. Amen. Amen. Y'all are welcome to stay and watch. Would you rather us wait for us to leave? Okay, yeah. I don't know where I'll put it.